Hey guys, in just a few days, they're going to run the 75th edition of the Lucas Oil Little 500 at Anderson Speedway. 75 years is a significant milestone for any event, uh, and it's a great milestone for any short track event especially. Now we're going to have the race live for you on MAV TV on Flow Sports. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to Flow, I'll put a link below where you can click and uh, find out more info. Lots of great racing available there. We'll also have the race tape delayed on MAV TV. Uh, hope you'll join us if you can't be at the track. Now what we've got for you today is a clip we were a part of in 1994 the 46th running of the Little 500, Roger Hess and his group out of Tulsa, along with Larry Newber, came out and produced a one-hour show for Prime Sports Network. Now, at that time, this was a real coup for the Little 500 to be able to get the race on TV here in the Midwest. And Prime was a, a pretty substantial um, sports, re, what they called regional sports network back in the day. Uh, now, I was asked to come in and be a part of the broadcast, and I did a a little history bit that I'm going to show you here in just a minute. You'll hear Larry Newber's voice as he intros this spot. Now I was still a very much a newbie in front of the camera, but it was really fun to find this clip. Let's take a look from 1994, the history of the Little 500. Racing journalist Dave Argebright is the historian of the Little 500 and tells us of a proud history. In 1949, very few tracks in America were paved or steeply banked, like this track. That was the year that an innovative promoter named Joe Helping decided to try something revolutionary at this track he called Sun Valley Speedway. He decided to feature 33 roaring roadsters for 500 laps on the night before the Indianapolis 500, calling it the Little 500. Sam Skinner went 500 laps without a pit stop to win the first event, and despite tremendous skepticism, the race was both an artistic and a commercial success. The race gradually evolved to sprint cars, attracting many legendary drivers, many of which went on to the Indy 500, including Johnny White, Ronnie Dooman, Jim McElree, Johnny Rutherford, and many more. By the 1970s, the race was clearly the top pavement sprint car race in the country. And that prominence remains today in the modern world of fast, lightweight race cars. Today, men like Joe Helping and Sam Skinner are gone, but they're hardly forgotten because they were the pioneers that developed an idea that turned into the world's most spectacular sprint car race, the Little 500. Now, looking at that clip today, my buddy Roger and Larry probably should have got on my butt just a little bit and said, more energy, Dave, more energy. You look like you're asleep out there. But as I said before, I was still a newbie and, and I, I was volunteer help. They probably didn't yell at me at the time because they, they didn't want me to get mad and go home. But uh, I did try to get better as the years went by and it's fun to look back at pieces like that. Uh, now, as part of the broadcast that day was Larry Newber, as I mentioned, also Larry Rice and George Wilkins. Now, those three guys were dear best friends of mine and uh, working with them on various projects through the years, it was just a great thing. And, and this th watching this clip was a little bit bittersweet for me because all three of those guys, unfortunately, are no longer with us. So I guess that uh, makes me grateful that I was a part of that and, and grateful for that chance to work with them. But hope you'll join us Saturday night for the 75th edition of the Lucas Oil Little 500. It's going to be live on MAV-TV on Flow Sports. Hope you'll join us. Thanks for watching, guys.